uh, moving away from family and my friends and my network, uh, moving to a place called Adelaide, which is, um, for some people, it's an exciting place, but for me, it wasn't so much. Um, so the journey to get there, like I played, started playing when I was eight, uh, 11 years old, and so you're your age. Um, and then I, you know, I played under 15s uh, state when I was 13 years old. I was the best player in Australia uh, for under 16s when I was 14 years old. Um, got drafted when I was 17, played you know, all Australian, did all that sort of stuff. Um, but then the moving to Adelaide was, was a big challenge for me in terms of because I was pretty close to my family. And I relied on my family support to get me through, um, allowing me sort of to do what I had to do. Um, but then injuries and performance and everything was a sort of big part of sort of that comes with it that no one really sort of talks about when you're sort of living a dream of playing AFL. Um, but then I, I came back to Melbourne and played at Hawthorne when I was 19. So I spent two years in Adelaide. Um, but the biggest challenge with all of it was that I was living with anxiety and depression the whole time, um, undiagnosed at the time. So, you know, thinking that it was just normal how it all worked. Um, and it is normal. It is normal for people to to, to go through it, anxiety and depression, and uh, having a mental illness. Um, and what we try to do is help other people understand. What, what I try to do now is help people understand that it is okay to have these challenges in your life, um, but not letting them sort of beat you. That you have to beat that. So, um, but yeah, I played AFL for eight years. You know, there's a big journey up and up and downs all the time, and um, in and out of the side, injuries, um, suspensions, all the exciting stuff. So, but in the end, you know, I look back on it and think, you know, it was my greatest achievement, but it was my most challenging journeys. Thanks, Lee. Who's yep. next? Um, yep, you stand up, right? Um, did you have any role models? Who were they, and what influence? have any role models. I have lots of role models. I have different different sorts of role models for all different parts of my life. But my biggest role model was probably my dad. As, as most people, are, their, their biggest role model is one of their parents. Um, for me, it was my dad. My dad played soccer for Australia back in, back in the old days. Um, so growing up in a sporting family, um, my dad sort of led the way in how it was to work in terms of being a professional sports person. Um, you know, and then he sort of taught me the ways of, you know, around hard work and the challenges and putting yourself and putting the extra, um, putting the extra sessions in and making sure that I was getting the best out of myself. So for me, it was a role model, but then there's a role model that I had in my mum. So my role, my mum is a massive role model for me now because being a husband and a, a dad, um, you know, my mum's my role <laughs> in sort of um, teaching me the ways to be a good parent. Hi, I'm Alexandra. Hi. What has been a difficult part of your journey and what did what did you do to get through, through the time? What did I get through? My biggest difficulty in my my journey was, was living with mental illness. Um, you know, as I said, from when I was 14 years old, um, I've been living with anxiety and depression, and then having to understand how that was to be a part of my life. Um, it wasn't, we weren't sure at the time, until I only got, I only went actually seek help, which is the biggest and best step that I've ever made, and most um, sort of inspiring choice that I've ever done is, is actually putting my hand up to go and get help. Um, when I say I went to get help, I had to go see a psychiatrist and psychologist um, to put me in a position to understand what was going on in my head and what was going on in my life. Um, so living with that and still playing and still playing AFL, which was, you know, trying to put the suit and trying to put the, still my best foot forward so that I can get the best out of myself in my career um, was a massive challenge, um, but a, a challenge that I sort of took and I understood it. Um, and, and we got through it. Obviously, it didn't sort of my AFL career didn't go on for as long as we'd hoped because I finished when I was 25. Um, I was supposed to win 10 brown lows and play 350 games and do all that, but I didn't, which is okay. Um, but that was the most difficult part of my journey. 
But I also look at it as probably the most rewarding part of my journey because I am uh, now I'm the best person that I can be because I understand who I am and what I'm doing. Oh, okay, number six, uh, my answer is, are you work, working towards goals now? What are they and what are you doing to get there? What are my goals now? So I have goals now that are uh, both, I have personal goals and I also have professional goals. Um, my professional goals are to keep growing the Love Me Love You Foundation. So we're, as, as, as you guys might know around the Love Me Love You Foundation, we're a youth mental health organisation that goes into schools and sports clubs all over the state. Um, delivering awareness education programs um, and my goal with that is to, to grow that and have an impact on people and communities um, it, around the mental health space, so understanding support systems and hopefully people get the best out of themselves. Um, but my biggest goal personally next year is that I'm um, uh, aiming to run a marathon. So in July, July 2nd, um, up in the Gold Coast, I'm aiming to run the Gold Coast Marathon. And for me, personally, that's going to be a huge goal and a milestone for me to achieve because um, five years ago, I nearly lost my leg um, from, a, from a football injury. Um, and so I dislocated my knee playing footy um, and then sort of had to have emergency surgery to... Um, because I had an infection from the from the operation, the initial operation, and then we lost my leg. So it's always been something that I wanted to do to to understand for myself um, that I could overcome all those challenges. Um, and running a marathon for me would be the biggest challenge that I could ever do um, at this stage of my life. So putting the sessions in, training, I train four or five times a week. Um, you know, speak to speak to people. That have done marathons before to check about you know, what their experiences were, what the challenges they went through. Um, you know, we do a lot of research on something on, on the marathon, what needs to be done, different training techniques. And I think that's the biggest thing is understanding that when you're trying to achieve goals, other people may have achieved similar goals. So researching it, and for me, researching it in, in different ways that can that it can be achieved is, is pretty important um, because you want to achieve. What you set out to do, yeah, um, but planning it and putting that preparation in to make sure that you do achieve those goals is pretty important. Ah. Hello, I'm Arkham. Arkham, how you Do you have any advice for the group about striving towards goals? Biggest thing that I can tell you is to understand what your goals might be um, and actually planning it out and preparing yourself to achieve. If you write down, if you actually write down and think about what those steps are in terms of you wanting to achieve that goal, you're much better, you're much better chance of achieving it. If you just think of something in your head one day and it pops up and you go, I want to do this, then you don't really plan to, to, to achieve it. You don't put the steps in place to achieve it. It's going to be a lot more difficult to achieve a goal. So putting the plans in place and making sure that, you know, that no one step, no one sort of gets in your way of achieving whatever you want to achieve, because you know, a lot of people told me when I was younger that I wouldn't play AFL, and I proved them wrong because I planned it and made sure that I did it. A lot of people told me that I wouldn't do this walk from Sydney to Melbourne um, a couple of years ago, and I, you know, planned it out and prepared myself and I achieved it. Um, a lot of people told me that the foundation wasn't going to happen. Um, you know, and we, you know, three years later, we're kicking some massive goals and doing our thing. Um, and, you know, a part of my life that a lot of people told me that I wouldn't be a husband and I wouldn't be a dad. So, planned it out, got my beautiful wife, and now I have my beautiful son. So, put whatever you want in your mind, put your mind to whatever you want to achieve, but make sure you plan out to actually achieve it. Amy. Um, hi, my name's Amy. Amy. Class would like to hold a fundraiser for the Love Me Love You organisation. Miss Foster, our grade prep one teacher, is going to do the march with me. How can we fundraise for her? How can you fundraise for her? You can, what I would suggest, and what we try to do at Love Me Love You around that space, is that we we like you to organise a school walk. So it might be everyone at school for an hour or so, it does laps of the oval or does walks around town or something like that. You know, you come in with gold coin donations or you can do a sausage sizzle or something like that. 
There you go, gold coin. Um, but that's what we're trying to do, help people understand, um, especially with our walk that we do with March With Me, is help people understand um, the physical activity that can actually benefit one's mental health. Um, but actually doing physical activity uh, and these healthy lifestyle choices with other people and helping people understand um, the, the support systems that are around it. So making a big statement like getting everyone at school or whoever wants to do it at school um, to do a big walk together, um, you know, take lots of photos and you know, tell people about what you're doing. That's the biggest thing. But we're trying to create a conversation around mental health and help people understand what support systems are available to them. Yeah, that'd be a cool idea. Yeah. Thank you. Has anyone else got a question for Lance? Have I have? I've got a question. Yeah. Did it put a lot of pressure on you coming from a sporty family to be act a good at sport? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely did. Um, so I have a younger, I have an older brother and an older sister, and my older brother also was a, was a gun sportsman. Um, we played basketball and football. Um, but having the pressure from dad to be the best, um, and to be, the, to, be a, to be a good sportsman, to be a good footballer, it was a tricky one because dad played soccer, right? So, and then I wanted to play football. So that sort of whole understanding around being the best at my sport was a different, because it's a different sport, being the best at my sport was not going to be the same as him being the best at his sport. Um, obviously, there was a lot of pressure, but we, the, what I've learned to understand over the time is the only pressure that we need to understand, we need to, to appreciate is the pressure that we put on ourselves. There's going to be a lot of um, external influences, so for other people thinking, you know, putting the pressure on you, but you don't have to worry about what they are wanting to you to do, that's all you have to do is worry about what you want to do and the pressure that you put on yourself to achieve. Yeah. 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 What's the best achievement in your whole life? Never mind. She asked, What's your best achievement? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one for you, Lance. You said yes. it was one of the hardest things was to go and seek help. Yep. with the issues you were having and you said the psychiatrist and psychologists were very helpful what what was it that they did that made that difference for you uh, i don't know if it was the actual psychiatrist or psychologist that did it for me um but when it was that the, finally i put my hand up to, to understand the challenges that were was that my my now wife at the time she was my girlfriend she she helped me she helped me understand a little bit about, you know, that I needed support and I needed to seek, needed to seek some, some help. Um, and that was the biggest thing for me and, and actually sort of being able to express what was going on in my head um, for the period of time, you know, 15 years beforehand that I was, you know, sort of bottling all these emotions up and dealing with it myself. Um, so for me, a big thing that I do now and I still, I still do it today is that I, I write a lot. I write a lot in a journal. Um, and it's just to myself, and it's not to anybody, nobody has to see it. But I just write, I just sit there, I could sit there for hours on end and just write about what's going on in my head. So that helps me um, uh, express myself in terms of what's going on in my emotions. Um, but pulling back into what sort of is important for me in terms of also physical activity, um, but not being obsessive compulsive with it. <laughs> Just understanding the lifestyle choices to make for myself, and um, you know, and I think I've been achieving them pretty well of late. Great, thanks, uh, Lance. Um, I've watched you play footy, being involved with Crane Footy Club, and you've reached the highest level with AFL. And yeah. then you and Luke and Koch and that came back from the city to play with Crane. What was it you enjoyed about our country area, about coming back to a country club? Come back to Kareem. I appreciate uh, appreciate what the community is. Yeah, um, the, the the family and supportive culture that um, that that I had that I experienced at Kareem Footy Club. Um, the biggest thing around that was that they made me feel like I was a local. Um, you know, so it made me more comfortable in my ability to go out and play and you know give my best to the to the footy team. Um, winning was pretty awesome because you know. 
in the whole time, the three years that I was there, I think I only lost one game, so that sort of helped out a fair bit. Um, you know, winning the three flags, but knowing that, you know, that I am, even though I'm not a Kareem boy as in terms of growing up and being a, 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 an actual local, that I'm made to feel like a local, um, and I am supported by, you know, I could come back to the Kareem next week and come into town and that I would have um, people and friends that I could, could hang out with or, you know, go and do something with. So. It's providing a supportive culture that I think they do best, and that's why they, they've been so successful. And just on that, um, obviously, Kareem's given you support with Mark, with me. You might yeah. want to explain to students just what that is, that, that weekend you do, and how you've had support here, what's come from Kareem, how people have got involved and, and helped you out, and, and the foundation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we've... So as you know, like one of our biggest supporters, or a few of our biggest supporters um, from the Kerrang town is Luke Livingston. Um, he's all on Luke, Luke Livingston. So Luke Livingston is actually the chairman of our foundation. So he's pretty much the big boss, um, which for me provides a lot of support. But what we really appreciate is is the local people, is, is the people on the ground sort of helping us out to achieve what we do at Love Me, Love You and our walk. Um, so, you know, this year, uh, oh, sorry, in 2017, we, same thing, we're going to be walking from Port City to Port Melbourne, which is 116 kilometres over two days. Um, and having the people in Kerrang, you know, we we'll probably have about 10, 15 people from Kerrang Town um, in next year's walk, which it will be huge in terms of what it does is it actually provides a conversation back to the community. So it's bringing the conversation around mental health and support systems um, to the people that need it um, because we can do all we want um, I can do all I want in the, in the space and go and do all the talks and all that sort of stuff but it's actually the people in the community that are having a conversation around what we do that makes us um, so impactful so you know we appreciate everything that's been done with fundraising, awareness um, social media campaigns um, you know, I know last year Georgia and Caitlin um, organised a big walk in town. I think they did a couple of them, um, which you know, which were amazing. So as I said, it's just um, being able to have that conversation with people that might be in need of support. Yeah. Uh, you got a question? Um, have you ever been in interested in any other sport apart from football? Yeah. Yeah. So I played basketball. I started playing basketball when I was four years old. Um, so from when I was four till I think I was 15 or 16, I started, I played basketball um, and I did athletics at school as well. Um, they were my sort of three sports, so athletics, basketball and footy. Um, but when I was 16, 15, 16, I had to make the choice between basketball and footy um, because I just had to be able to give the best to my that, to that one sport. And, and knowing from that age, that I wasn't going to be a, a six foot, I wasn't going to grow to well, six foot three or six foot four at basketball was going to be the sport. Um, and I enjoyed football a lot more because it's physical. Um, and I could tackle people and I could, you know, do all those sorts of things that I like to do in football um, that I couldn't do in basketball because you can't really tackle in basketball. Is that right? <laughs> well, I don't know how you play, but I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Anyone else yep. got a question? Yeah, do like yep. How did you cope with your depression? How? Well, I didn't cope very well. <laughs> um, for me, it was really challenging because I I didn't know that I had depression, and this is the big issue that we have these days: is, is people not being di not not di having diagnosed depression. So people living with depression or anxiety or any sort of super mental illness, but not knowing that they are that they actually have it. So for me, I didn't really deal with it too well. Um, I, I relied on my my footy to get me through, which it did for a long time. Um, but then, well, you know, injuries and everything happened. And I couldn't play football for a long time, so it was pretty. It, it affected me pretty bad. But I also appreciate the fact that. What depression did for me was is made me the strongest person that I could possibly be today. So I, I know that I'll overcome every challenge that we that I'm faced with, and I'll overcome everything that that comes in my way. So depression, even though it sort of nearly killed me, it um has made me the strongest and best person that I could possibly be today. Okay, anyone else got a question? 
Is there anything no. else you'd like to say, Lance, before we wind up there? So. I think it's just important that you understand that if you're going through challenges or what you're going through in life, that there are people there to support you. Um, but what you have to understand is that you are yourself, your best support system. You know, being able to understand who you are, what you do, you know, what you want to do in life, you know, that you know your, you know yourself the best. You know, putting yourself in a position to achieve, to achieve um, no matter what people say or what people do, um, you are your best person and, you know, that's all you can, that's all you can ask for in life is for you, for you to be your best person. No, but that, that's been fantastic and some great advice there for the students. Really appreciate your time. Beautiful. Thank you very much. We've just got Kyla to finish off here. Thanks, Kyla. Can you stand up? On behalf of Five Six, we'd like to thank you about what's happened in your life and the experience that you've had. Beautiful. Thanks very much. It's more of an honour for me to be in your classroom than for you to be on my computer. Thanks very much for your time, Lance. Much appreciated. Thanks very Hope much. Hope to see you crank again soon. Go Blues. Come up for the footy. Go Blues. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep with it. Thanks, Lance. Good on you, mate.